Kia ora team, Hive Storm is here and today we are looking at the Stingwings. These guys look awesome. I've been really excited for this edition of Kill Team and so without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm starting things off with my usual prime method. It's just a all over black. And then once I've got good coverage on that, I switch to a white and spray from roughly 45 degrees just from above here. Normally I'm pretty good at this point, but because I want to use some contrast paint, I'm just going to add an extra bit of white just to help round out the, the gradient on these. And then we're going to get some quick coverage on these guys. I'm starting off with contrast paint, I and in yellow, and I'm looking to get just a very quick coat on basically the whole model. I'm leaving sections like the wings and the armor sections, the gun, things like that. The one thing I love about these sculpts is that they take the contrast paint so well. You can already see these recesses are getting these lovely shadows. The other thing this contrast paint is doing for me is that it's creating a rough landscape of where I want these highlights and shadows to be. And then I'm going to crack out the old favorite deck tan here. And I'm adding this to the underside of this abdomen. I kind of want the, the shell of these sting wings to feel like armor. And then I want like the, the sort of squishy bits to come, come across as gross insect like. I'm not going to bother with the in between sections between the arms and the shoulders, but I will do it for the neck. And I'm going to shade that with Seraphim Sepia. And this is just a very quick shade on top just to help come across as a little bit more alien and fleshy. I'm trying to get most of my washes done now so that I don't have to worry about drying time later on. And while I've got that deck tan handy, I'm using that on the wings. This is just a simple coat all over. And then I'm taking a pure white and just kind of wet blending that in. I'm not looking to get like a smooth transition, just highlighting it just a little bit towards the edges there. And because those two paints are wet, it will just blend nicely. I'm switching over to Dragon Red and I'm using this on all of the guns and some of the armor sections as well. I wanted a nice vibrant red to kind of bounce off of these yellows that I'm planning on using. And so this red is just dark enough that it kind of complements nicely. I could have done a Mephiston red or something brighter, but I wanted this nice deep scarlet red to go against these very bright yellows. So I'm also using this for the backpack apparatus as well. And then for some of the specialty weapons, I'm just picking certain sections of those that I feel just need a, a pop of color. And as I said earlier, I'm using this on some of the armor sections for the shade strain and the leader. To finish out the underbelly section, I've just gone back to that original deck tan and just added a couple quick highlights here. Now I'm using a grim black and I'm finishing out some of these areas on the weapons and the backpack. I just wanted to add an, a secondary color to these just to help them break up a little bit more. And like I did on the specialty weapons, I've just gone back through and picked certain sections that I feel look good in black. Okay, now we're using Victorian Brass. And this is my final accent color. So I'm adding this to the Tau symbology on the guns and on those armored sections as well. And now I'm using a Null Oil 
and I'm just shading these areas. So what this is going to do is this is going to darken that red to a very deep scarlet without it being too purple. And then just for good measure, I'm putting it on top of the contrast paint as well. And because the red was a little patchy, this helps cover up some of those thinner areas. Moving on to the shell of the sting wings, I'm using an array of yellows. And I'm starting off with the darkest of the shades, which is the Tau Light Ochre. And I'm almost covering up that contrast paint work. I'm looking to get just a little bit more control with the lights and shadows on these models. If you're happy with the way the contrast paint looks, you could probably leave it at this stage. But I'm leaving the contrast paint in the recesses, like between these sections here. You can see that the contrast paint did its job perfectly, but the trouble is on like a black primer, this yellow starts to become a little green. And I'm looking to just introduce some of that mustard warmth back into the yellow. So I've highlighted here just exactly where I'm going to start using this darker shade. And in the background on the wet palette, you can see that I've mixed a gradient between the Tau Light Ochre, the Uriel Yellow, and then the Moon Dust. And I've mixed those colors in between each of those. And then what I've done is I've taken that black and mixed it with the Tau Light Ochre to make my darkest, darkest shade that I just want to use only in the shadows. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to establish almost like a rule set so that once I get my recipe, I can then apply these to all the other models in the kill team. So I'm using this darkest shade only in the shadowed areas, these green areas where the contrast paint just kind of went a little bit funky. And it helps round out and warm up those shadows a little bit more. And then I'm starting to build up in these tones. So this is a mixture between the Uriel and the Tau Ochre. And I'm focusing all these highlights towards the highest or the most upturned areas of the model. So this would be on the edges here on the abdomen. And then a Uriel yellow on the top parts of the abdomen. And this might take a couple coats because it is a thinner yellow. And then a mixture between the moon dust and the Uriel for the top highlight. You can also see that I'm getting smaller and smaller in my highlight sections as well. And then another rule that I'm establishing for this recipe is that pure moon dust is only reserved for the edge highlights. So I wouldn't use the moon dust for anything other than just these edges. And this helps create just a smoother transition between the darker and the lighter shades. It also helps me control exactly where I want those highlights. The contrast paint works really well as just creating a rough map of like where things would be darker and lighter. But you can kind of see it's a little blotchy in places. It's not quite as as refined. Here the arm is in contrast paint. I haven't touched it yet. But you can see the leg has been done using this method. And it's an extra few steps. This does take a very long time to do. But it does just give it that nice little extra feel to it. And while I've got that dark shade mixed, I'm using this for the mandibles, the sort of gum line around the teeth, and the antenna as well. And I'm focusing this towards the face because I'm going to wet blend to another color on the outside. So here I'm taking the black, just applying a very quick splodge of it. And then with a damp brush, just feathering that edge between the two colors. If you're quick and the paint is still wet, you could just mix it between the two, but this had already dried. And then I'm taking that Tau Light Ochre and just adding a quick edge highlight 
I don't want the edge highlight to be too bright on the face here. I'm very carefully pinpointing the eyes. At this stage though, I haven't applied any highlights to the face yet, so if I do make any mistakes, I can clean them up with one of the yellows. Another recipe rule that I'm establishing is that I'm using this darker shade to just add to the edges of these wings. I like the idea that they're kind of darker towards the base of the wing. And then I'm using Moon Dust, which is the brightest of the shades, just for the feet and the hands. I like the idea of these bugs being kind of brighter towards the extremities. So I'm just increasing the contrast towards those. That's why these are the brightest section right now. I'm further boosting the brightness by introducing a little bit of white. So now there's almost a total of seven different levels of contrast. But another recipe rule that I'm introducing is that I'm only using these to highlight the hands and feet. And this is because I still want these to be the brightest section. I'm going in with a black and just doing a quick coat on the claws and the nails and also the stinger as well. I'm using a white to highlight the teeth. and then very carefully adding just a small dot of white to the eyes, just to help them appear a little bit more bug-like. And now it's over to the markings, and I hate doing really gross research on wasps, they freak me out. So this was like really nerve-wracking to pull up images of wasps, but I muscled through it and got my research and decided just to add a few markings to this abdomen. I wanted them to look wasp-like, but still kind of alien. So the abdomens are very wasp-inspired. And this is just some random markings. Each one has different markings. And then for the hands and feet, I'm just adding kind of blobs and splotches that look a little alien, look a little wasp-like, but aren't necessarily based on research. This was super fun to, to kind of make each one unique as well. It kind of gives them all a personality. I'm adding bigger markings on the shoulders. And uh, yeah, do you ever get grossed out by your own miniatures? Because I certainly was. At this stage, I'm going to get the bases done and I'm adding just a little bit extra weight to the base with some rocks that I'm super gluing on. This helps prevent them from tipping over. And then I'm using Vallejo's Earth Texture and I'm scooping this on and just blending that seam between the sculpt and the base. Again, this helps to add just a little bit of weight to them because they are quite fragile and light. And if you catch the wings, they will flip over. Just sprinkling in a couple of these cork rocks, just to add some texture. And then I'm pushing them into place into the texture paint. For the guns, I'm going to be using Tesseract Glow. And this is a nice fluorescent paint that works really well with a white undercoat. So for the center of this gun, I really want it to glow. It's a kind of neutron gun. And so I want it to really look radioactive. So I'm adding this to the crystal and then also to the edges of the gun to help accentuate a glow. And then I'm using jungle green and just kind of boosting this brightness up just a little bit. It will look a little odd, but if you kind of go back and forth between those two colors, you can kind of get a nice gradient going. And then once you're happy with it, I then mixed in a little bit of white to make kind of a lime green and just use this as an edge highlight to kind of accentuate the brightest section of that glow. While I'm finishing out the weapons, I'm using decayed metal for 
other specialty weapons. And this has two purposes. This just helps to add a little bit more color and range to the weapons, but also to help distinguish them at a distance. And then once that metallic paint is on, I'll just hit it with a nylon oil just to give it some shadow. And then some of the sections I may even use just nylon oil straight onto white to make kind of a metallic gray look. And then I'm going to switch to speed metal and just start adding some chipping and damage. This helps just to add a little bit more realism to the guns. They don't look like Nerf guns as much when you start adding like some weathering to them. To finish out the bases, I'm starting off with a neutral gray, and I'm just getting a quick overall coat on the whole thing, and then I'm using a rust gray and quickly adding a few highlights to the claws with this color. I wanted to introduce just a touch of blue in there just to break up some of these yellows and blacks. And then I'm using Coelia Green Shade, and I'm shading this base completely. I'm looking to match the Volcus terrain, and so looking at the play mat and stuff that comes in the box, I'm trying to match those colors as close as I can. This is just a quick dry brush of that rust gray. I could take some time here and like really highlight all the elements on the base, but I don't want to pull focus too much away from the miniatures. And then finally, this is a white dry brush just to add a couple highlights. Lastly, the Volcus terrain has a couple brown patches here and there, so I'm using that Seraphim sepia and just adding a few dots. And lastly, the Oversight drone, which almost was an Oversight because I forgot that it was in the kill team, so I quickly hurried and got this finished. I'm using the same reds and shading that I did for the weapons and armor. And then for the lenses, I'm using a little bit of rust gray, followed by a darker shade of rust gray with a bit of black mixed into it. And I'm applying this to the top half of the lens, and then just a touch of white for the highest highlight. And then I'm repeating this step on all of the other lenses. So for example, the Shade Strains lens and the Sniper lens as well. And then I'm adding just a little bit of damage with a sponge using the Speed Metal. And here they are, the terrifying Vespid Stingwings in a Wasp paint scheme, my biggest fear. I love these guys, they came out so good. I'm really happy that I took the extra time. I will say it was about 30, 35 hours worth of work. So if you're looking to repeat this recipe, just know that this isn't a quick thing. These guys came out great. Man, I hit the ground running on this box. I've got so much more to paint still but I'm really happy I got this first Kill Team done, ready for the first match of Kill Team 3.0. Feel free to let me know in the comments below what you think. This has been a really fun Kill Team to paint. Have you tried the new Kill Team yet? I'm dying to, I haven't even read the rule book yet, so I'm dying to play it. Next week, it's spooky season. We've got two weeks of really cool, spooky Halloween themed episodes. So if you want to see those, subscribe to the channel. As always, dropping a like really helps me out, and I will see everybody in the next one.